What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Jeepers Creepers in this video here again today. Didn't think I would be making a video like this this week or even at all because it was a shocking comment I saw left on my last video. But Travis, who plays Izzy from Jeepers Creepers 2, saw my theory video about Izzy and Rhonda because apparently a friend of his sent it to him. And I'm wondering if this was another Jeepers Creepers 2 cast member who watches my channel and sent it to him, which I think would be pretty cool to know. But he saw my video about that opening idea I had for Jeepers Creepers 5 yesterday, and he even commended me for telling the truth about the Jeepers Creepers 4 scenario with the director and what a disgrace that film is in general, and not just as a Jeepers Creepers movie, as many of you know. Now, Travis's comment was, again, very unexpected, but also made me geek out, of course. If you want to take a second to read his kind comment, pause the video and then finish playing it to hear me bitch and moan some more. So as you see, he revealed that there was an idea to bring Izzy and Bucky back that we never got and likely, of course, never will. However, I reached out and had a fun conversation with Travis, who gave me context on the feud between Victor Salva and the Jeepers Creepers 3 producers, which those producers, some also, of course, had a hand in Jeepers Creepers 4. Plus, he also explained further details on the TV show that would have brought Izzy, Rhonda, and Bucky back, although those details were minor, uh, which is also probably why he liked my opening idea, because he's like, this guy's pretty spot on with some stuff I might know, and he shared that with me. And then, of course, he also made some comments about his memories with Jeepers Creepers 2. We, of course, talked about Nikki Acox, may her soul continue to rest in peace, and Basically, he said that that show with Victor that he had written, he hasn't read the script for that, but he had a gist or had some general ideas I thought was pretty interesting to, to share with me because it gave me some context on the character of Izzy 20 years later and the character of Bucky. Nothing really on Rhonda, but Rhonda was mentioned. Now, so the show that Salva prepared, which you've heard me address on my channel before, apparently included an episode with Izzy, Rhonda, and Bucky returning 23 years later. This episode would have revealed that Izzy or isn't he was was actually <laughs> you if you've seen Jeepers Creepers 2, you get the joke. Because Izzy and Bucky are revealed as a couple now in this show. And this episode would have spent spent their time figuring out the lore behind the creeper. And Rhonda would have just shown up as a friend, I guess. Now, I would love to know how that episode played out entirely, but maybe I'll get to discuss it in-depthly sometime in the near future. I would have to assume this is, of course, after the Creeper escapes the Tagger Barn. Izzy and Bucky being a couple does seem a bit random, but I'm glad we got an answer on Izzy address 20 years later, since it was something he was teased for in Jeepers Creepers 2. So, if he was able to find confidence within himself and come out and be accepted, as I hope, then good for him. Now, Travis and I also discussed some memories, again, that he had regarding part two, and he seems down to do another Jeepers Creepers if he were to be approached. Travis also, again, like I mentioned earlier, shed some light on a report I recalled from 2017 after he told me some specific details regarding this feud that allegedly went on between Salva and the producers. So it would appear... Jeepers Creepers 3's Jeepers Creepers 3's reported feud between Salva and the producers has some truth to it even more so now. Horror Freak News reported this back in 2017 regarding the canceled world premiere of Jeepers Cre Jeepers 3 and I'm sure most of you might many of you rather might remember this canceled event. And a more notable site like MovieWeb picked up this same report. Now, it stated that having worked with the coordinator on the September 13th event I was privy to information that has been previously unreported. Even before the even for, even before the advanced screening was canceled, JC3 producers were actively working to undermine the event. They forbade the organizer from promoting the event as the world premiere as they didn't want it to distract from the September 26th nationwide event, a strange request as excitement from the 9 or from the September 13th event would have increased anticipation for the AMC Cinemark one night only screenings. But it turns out this is only one example of the film's producers actively working against its best interests and hardly the most profound. Another source close to the production has confirmed that a deep feud now exists between writer-director Victor Salva and the film's financers. Things have gotten so 
so I'll say out of hand. Initial reports claim producers passed on a worldwide distribution deal with Lionsgate in favor of a one night screening event. While the Lionsgate deal would have pushed the film's release back to March 2018, it would have ensured greater financial returns, even with the ongoing controversy surrounding the movie. So what else was happening though? This is where Travis comes in. According to Travis, his words, so apparently one of the producers on Jeepers Creepers 3 stole like two or three hundred thousand dollars from the special effects budget or not just stolen. It was misplaced. But when you're saying it's misplaced <laughs> to me, that comes off as if somebody stole it. That's a large amount of money to just have misplaced. Then Victor's contract about the film allegedly stated that he was supposed to get the final cut or have the final say in terms, of, I guess, the editing process. And he was supposed to be able to at least sit in the room with the editor like he's always done to make a good movie. And it was taken out of his hand. So he basically had no hand in the editing process. When he saw the movie, he threw a fit after he saw the first cut. He said it was absolute garbage. He said he didn't want his name attached to it. So they did a recut, which he still didn't have anything to do with as far as editing. And it came out just as bad. And he basically threw his hands up and said, I'm done with this. So here's my here's my thing there. When it comes to the editing, that's just one of the many problems with Jeepers Creepers 3. But knowing that he was confident enough to think that if he were in the editing room, he could have turned it into something at least more digestible. I can't really argue there because the way it turned out was pretty bad in, in the editing department as well. But then also Salva's rush script isn't any better, but he's he seems to be confident he could have made it work. And Travis went on to say this. He said, and Victor said, and he's not wrong. You can have a brilliant script and all the great actors in the world. And if you have a shit director or have a, have a shit editor, it will come out as garbage. So Salva knew that it was trash. And he was embarrassed, according to Travis. Now, on one hand, you could say job well done producers for screwing over this man. But I can't say that when he's now gone and these producers are still producing low effort cure for insomnia quality like feature films such as Jeepers Creepers 4. And then considering an actress like Eva Green, who recently had some issues with producer Jake Seal as well, who had a hand in not only 4, but Jeepers Creepers 3. And she apparently called another Jeepers Creepers producer named Terry Bird a moron. So with the lawsuit trends in mind surrounding these people, etc., it's just not a good thing for these people to be involved. You know, it's one thing to look at it and say they did us a favor by screwing over Victor Salva. Yeah, but look at what they're still doing. There was more going on here. Are we getting low effort films because they want to get back at Salva still? Or, and then also I highly doubt that because keep in mind, they reportedly were sabotaging the premiere. They were turning down deals for what could have brought in more financial returns for this one night screening. It would appear to me that they are content with bringing in as as little as possible that would be enough for them to at least say that's a success for our pockets screw the rest they're not interested in making quality films these people these producers i think we need to get rid of them we need to get rid of them the stuff with salva and his issues with them and you viewing it as a as a doing them us a favor i can understand that but when you're still actively just dropping low bar effort quality f making movies you didn't do that to get back at salva you did that because this is all about money to you. You're just trying to get quick money, profit off a notable IP, put out low effort content to said, said notable IP. You know, a small niche of the crowd or, or of the fandom will show up and that'll be profitable enough for you to say, hey, well, that's enough to fill my pockets and put food on my table at night. It's ridiculous. But let me know what you guys think about these details down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.